Yo, so today's question comes from one of my YouTube subscribers who goes on to ask, yo, Elliot, how do I get over the fear of choosing a woman to marry and then realizing that I've lost the option of all the other beautiful women in the world? So he wants to know, you know, how do I get over this fear of making a decision? Because that's really what it boils down to. Uh, today, I'm not going to talk specifically to your question about choosing a girl and then losing all the the option of all the other beautiful girls, because this kind of applies across the board to whether we're choosing what college to go to, what kind of career to go into, what kind of job to take, what kind of uh, car we're going to buy, what kind of life we're going to live. There's always going to be these moments where we have to decide, where we've got to choose. And whenever we choose, we go from infinite possibilities into collapsed reality. We go from unlimited to the limited, and that's what I wanna to talk to you a little bit about here today, because it is the essence of becoming a king. I talk about being a king in my videos and in my programs and things like that, because there's a lot of power behind the mythological symbol of a king. And so I wanna to relate to you uh, the way the symbol of the king works in this one mythological story, this one myth that I, heard of or I read, I came across it in the book Iron John, I believe, uh, where he relates many different uh, examples of how the king is used in mythology. But there's this one scene in one myth where there's a young man, right? And he's in the court, right? He's in the castle. He's in the court, king's castle, court of the king's castle. But the king's dead, right? The king's laying there, laying there. The king is immobile, useless and the young man has a decision to make he's got a sword and he's got a plow and I don't remember exactly how he gets into this circumstance and it's not even really the point the point is that the young man has to make a decision and when he makes the decision when he chooses one of those two the king pops up onto his feet and he's alive again right now again it doesn't really matter what his choice was the fact was and what was trying to be relayed in that message was that when you make a choice, your inner king comes to life. When you choose something, the universe conspires to help you achieve it. That's the whole point. Really in life, many of us fail at manifesting anything of any great quality because we fail to commit and choose, jump with two feet in. On any decision even when people make decisions they kind of go with one foot in and one foot out that's why you know divorce rates are at 60% that's why a lot of people can't maintain build or maintain mastery in any particular vocation because we very rarely do we do anything hot right there's a there's a really good passage in the Bible, probably one of the first passages in the Bible when I decided to read the Bible many years ago, I was like, wow, that like blew my mind in Revelations. I can't remember if it's like Revelations something 16, I don't know. Uh, but the message is relayed to the receiver of God's message, right? He says to him, these people were neither hot nor cold. They were lukewarm, thus I spit them out of my mouth. God basically saying, these people who are on the fence, these people who are wishy-washy, these people who have one foot in, one foot out, lukewarm, are useless to me. God can only make good use of people who choose, right? If you think of, you know, God as the king, it's the same thing. God stands up, the king stands up when we choose. It's super, super important. I'm gonna kind of keep playing with this, uh, with this mythological king symbolism. You know, I, I often talk about the king being uh, associated with the crown, right? You know, even they call it the crown chakra, but like what's happening up here uh, is related to the spiritual realm, right? King, warrior, magician, lover. It'll make more sense because the king is so mystical. It'll make more sense if I talk about magician, lover, and, and, and warrior, right? Like. The head, right? You get down here to thinking, what do you think right away? Magician, right? Calculating, right? Think Donatello in the, in the Ninja Turtles. He's the one that's thinking about stuff. Uh, lover, 
heart, right? Very simple, right? Because it's embodied, because we, we relate to the body, it's more present. Uh, warrior, what do you think, right? Arms, the body, ah, go get it, right? Magician, lover, warrior. Now, the king up here, why? Because it's associated with spirit. The king is associated with spirit. Spirit, being, thought, feeling, doing, right? So why am I bringing this up to you? Because spirit is boundless. Spirit has no boundaries. In the spiritual realm, there is infinite possibilities. And that's very enticing, especially to men, right? Say that men seek liberation where women seek uh, manifestation. Women are more uh, associated with the material world, right? They're more closely related to uh, uh, the earth. And the man is more closely related to spirit. And so, you know, in David Dita's amazing book, uh, The Way of the Superior Man, he always says men are always seeking liberation, right? And if you think about it, like every time we ejaculate, what are we doing? We're liberating, right? We, we let go of stuff, Whew, right? When you let go, when you ejaculate, right? Just think about that. There's millions of little sperms in there being liberated and the potential outcome is unlimited. You don't know what's gonna, what's gonna happen there with those, right? So it's kind of in our nature as men to wanna, wanna be liberated. So this idea of being within the, uh, living within or being, allowing ourselves to stay stuck or stagnant or uh, uh, addicted to options keeps us limited as men because even though the king is associated with the spiritual realm, Nothing becomes manifest until it passes through into the, collapses into reality, right? I spoke about, about that before. You know, there's the infinite, right? There's infinite and then there's finite. The infinite collapses at the cross into the finite and becomes something, right? And it goes the other way around too, right? The finite moves into the infinite once it's, once we die or once it's liberated. And so the, the essence of being a king is the cross because it's taking what's expansive, boom, and bring it into the limited. And so once again, can, you know, continuing along with this kingly talk, um, Robert Moore says that where the king is, order ensues because it goes from disorder, right? The spiritual realm also, we think chaos because there, it's totally disordered. The spirit realm, because it's not manifest, can be considered chaos. Think of, um, think of air particles, right? Air particles, oxygen particles, particles in the air. They're just very chaotic, right? But think about the particles in this book. It's dense, boom, it's been condensed, right? It's, it's locked in, locked down. And so there, when it comes to men and the idea of being locked down, committed, it's a little scary to go from infinite possibilities to condensed reality. And so a lot of men, a lot of us, we, uh, we, we don't choose, <laughs> right? But once again, the king does not stand up until a choice is made. So let me come back full circle. You know, I'm talking in metaphors and I'm speaking a lot of things here. Hopefully it makes sense to you guys. You know, I'm trying my best here. Uh, choosing a woman, choosing a job, choosing a career path, choosing. Choosing is the most kingly thing that someone can do. Now, the, it doesn't stop with choosing. In other words, just because you choose and the king stands up doesn't mean that the journey is over. In fact, when the king stands up because you've chosen, that's when the journey begins. That's when the work begins. That's when the process, because if Becoming is, becoming is not a, like, you don't get married and that's it. You don't uh, choose a career path and that's it. That's, you choose the, the direction that the work is now going to start. And when it comes to uh, marriage, it comes to a relationship, here's what the work looks like. Because I'm going to ask you a question. Here's what the work looks like. First of all, it's the, it's the idea of choosing because kings choose. You, you have to make a choice in order to be supported by the universe for the king st to stand up, right? 
uh, or, or, or don't, right? You don't choose. You could choose not to choose women at all. And I, you know, I support the idea of men going their own way also. But to be in this gray area, to be in this promiscuous place, to be in this flitting back and forth or uh, uh, lukewarm, God spits you out of the mouth. There's no king associated with that. King is associated with choosing. You could choose not to choose, which means nothing. We choose. You choose a woman. All right? That's, I see those both as very righteous options. I don't see promiscuity and flitting around, fucking around as a, as a good option for men. Or I, there's enough proof to show you that that's not a support, that's not a sustainable option. Uh, and it's riddled with a myriad of different negative sides, except you get to, you know, taste a lot of different flavors. Anyway, where am I going with this? Back to uh, relationship. I, of course, think I think relationships are a good idea. Right? It's been my experience. I can only stand by what I know. It's been great. But I see it failing for a lot of people. So I understand. Might not be an option for you. But that's when the work begins. So a relationship is designed or any choice, any choice we make, a relationship or a job. But let's just talk about the relationship. Relationship and anything that we choose is designed to develop virtue in us. What are the virtues that this choice is now going to ask me uh, or I'm being asked to develop? And so when you choose, say, a woman, for example, you get to, choose, you get to develop the virtue that's associated with continuing to choose. To, how about this one? It's the virtue of creating boundaries for yourself, right? Like discipline. Like, like guys that can't help themselves, but cheat on their girlfriends, cheat on their wives. And a lot of the issue is that they're just, they just don't have the discipline to say no. They have the discipline not to uh, keep dipping into the ice cream factory, right? They got to keep getting more, more and more flavors. Oh, man. Like that, that's the addicted lover, right? That's where uh, the manifestation uh, part of this can grow perverted, right? The warrior part is when you're, you're just way too rigid, overthinking. But then the, the, the addicted lover is the one that just like Robert Moore says, the, uh, the, the, the lover never saw anything that it doesn't want to lick. <laughs> the, the lover wants to lick everything. Oh, I want to taste that. I want to taste that. I want to taste that. But then you get to build the, the, the virtue of discipline by overcoming your lower faculties. And sex, sex is a lower faculty. Just let's just get that straight. It's a very base, primal faculty, and it's a powerful one. Thus, it brings forth children. That's why, you know, that's its purpose. That's the point of having sex. The rest of it is to draw us into into that particular act. But it's a base. It's base. It's lower. It's a lower faculty. Where, you know, and then you think about. The kingly faculties, they're, they're much more ephemeral, right? The essence of being or um, no, uh, uh, honor, nobility. I'm drawing a blank right here and right now. But anyway, so, you know, the higher faculties are the opposite. So we get to overcome the lower with the higher by disciplining the body, put it, subjugating the body to the spirit. So this is one of the uh, myriad of different character virtues that you're now going to be developing as a, pro, as, a, as a result of making a choice, right? But if you don't make a choice, you don't get that opportunity, right? You don't make the choice to go to the gym, you don't go stronger. And it's like that with all the choices that we make. Every, every choice that we make is like going to the gym because now you're going to do work. So that's it, man. I hope that helps you. It's not easy to choose. Nobody wants to choose. But unless we choose, nothing manifests. When we make that choice, the inner king stands up. Done.